a little over 200 years ago, trying to find a solution to the problem of steam engine boiler explosions, Reverend Robert Stirling patented his first engine that ran on air. The Stirling engine worked on the principle of the expansion of gases when they are heated. To explain how it works? We will start with a cylinder which contains a certain amount of air and is perfectly sealed by a piston. Suppose the cylinder is half filled with air at normal temperature and pressure. Now, we apply heat to the cylinder and raise its temperature, say, to about 100 degrees Celsius. The air in the cylinder increases in volume and moves the piston to the right in the drawing. Then, we remove the heat source and surround it with some cold water to cool it down. When cooling down, the air contained in the cylinder decreases in volume and now the piston moves to the left. Assuming we could be repeating this cycle indefinitely, we would have a reciprocating motion of the piston. This very reciprocating movement is required in any conventional piston engine. If we now link the piston by means of a connecting rod to a crankshaft that drives a flywheel, we will convert this movement into rotation. We will then have a rotary motion. Naturally, it would be very difficult to be moving around the heat source and the water source continuously, so let's see how they made a more practical working machine. Two cylinders can be placed on a single crankshaft, offset by 90 degrees, with one cylinder in a horizontal position and the other in a vertical position. In this drawing, the horizontal cylinder is called the hot cylinder, which causes the air to increase its volume by applying heat to it, which can be from combustion or by concentration of sunlight. The vertical cylinder is called the cold cylinder, which does the job of cooling the air by means of a set of cooling fins. To go on with the explanation, assume that the piston inside the hot cylinder is at the position where a small volume of air can fit in the cylinder. With the heat source turned on, the air in the hot cylinder begins to increase its volume, thus gaining pressure, pushing the piston to the right side of the drawing. At the same time, the piston inside the cold cylinder reaches the end of its upward stroke, thus preventing the entry of any hot air from the horizontal cylinder. Almost immediately, the piston of the vertical cylinder begins to go down, thus drawing hot air through the pipe connecting both cylinders, thereby causing the air to be cooled down to room temperature, thus losing volume. The cold cylinder piston goes up again, pushing the cold air into the hot cylinder, where it gets heated again, and the cycle goes on and on. The shaft driven by the crankshaft has a flywheel mounted to ensure uniform motion. Although this is an external combustion engine, it behaves like a fossil fuel engine, since it needs a little manual push of the flywheel to get the engine started. The key to its operation is that heat must be continuously transferred from the hot cylinder to the cold cylinder. I hope this video has been interesting for you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Shavitarine.